So, Beto, how are you, man? Great, great. A uh, little bit under the weather because, and I mean, not under the weather, but yeah. literally under the weather because it's been a shitty rainy day all yeah. day today. Uh, but great. Uh, very excited about our, our interview today. Our, yeah. our guest is a very special guest because we both are, are fans of his work. and Actually, yeah. Uh, we were uh, waiting for this, like, I don't for, know. For a month, actually? I was going to say two or three days, but yeah, for a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> no, <not> sorry. <laughs> so why, why don't you introduce him? I, I'm afraid I, I'm, I'm going to get uh, his last name wrong, so Man. it's your turn. <laughs> well, okay, don't worry about it. Uh, well, we have as a guest uh, Jason from Grainy Days. Hey, guys. Thanks well, for having me. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Well, right now it is Joda. It's Joda. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who Jason is. It's pronounced uh, Kummerfeld, by the way. Okay. Kummer okay. Kummerfeld. Easy. Yeah, yeah, easy across the board. Okay, yeah, yeah. Kummerfeld. Nice. Yeah. Not, not tricky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I should say, uh, uh, first of all, I just went to around the corner to the beer store and bought the fanciest... Well, this is not an, an, uh, an APA, but it's a pale ale. So I'm going to show it to you. In your honor, this is called Poca Ropa, which okay. translates <laughs> in like barely clothes. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense for me. <laughs> <laughs> so cheers, man. Have you had it before? No, no. It's, no? This is the first time I'm, I'm going to try it. So Okay. All right. I think so, you, can, you can get this in, in California. Because it says it's from the brewery Topa Topa in Ventura, California. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that out. I don't yeah. think, yeah, I don't think I've come across that one. And uh, I've been to most breweries out here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jason, thank you for joining us in this conversation, in this little chat. So, I think maybe the, the first question is always a little philosophically, but here it is is who is jason and what does he do for a living <laughs> hmm that's a good question uh i feel like i'll let you know as soon as i figure it out um <laughs> i'll email you <laughs> yeah it might, be in like, right. <laughs> might be in like 70 years or so but um who is jason um uh, i guess i'm a photographer um i also make a dumb little YouTube videos. And I think that's how most people probably know me. Um, but on the side, I work as a visual effects artist. I actually just quit my job about two weeks ago now, and I'm doing YouTube and photography full time. Great. So um, that's great. Yeah, I guess a photographer is is Jason. That's a dream. Actually, that's the dream. That is the dream. Yeah, <laughs> it's been uh, it's been pretty crazy. It's been pretty hectic. I've already flew uh across the country and i've got more plans to go out and shoot more the rest of this month so it does not slow down nice that's that's nice what about you so, guys what do you guys do for a living who who is david and who is beto i'm david oh come on <laughs> well i know <laughs> I'm, just, just, I'm asking just you philosophically <laughs> well david on, you, you first just backfire to us you first okay. you first you first beto uh, well, Beto, I, I am a uh, video producer and also a filmmaker, whatever you want to call it, uh, everything that has to do with uh, filmmaking. And also, sometimes I like to call myself a, a photographer. And right now, I'm just full uh, time. A, I have a, a lab, a film lab here in, in Mexico City. And I'm just doing photography and developing film for my clients. And that's who I am right now. That sounds like the dream, at, man. At least to date. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it doesn't slow down. It is hustling every day. It, it is hard, but it, it is a dream. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's, you had to pay the price, right? Um, well, and David. Um, and me, David, uh, I am, I think I'm not a photographer, actually, I'm a little, um, maybe aficionado, photography aficionado, 
maybe sometimes I put so much effort on my photography. I want to be a good photographer and a professional photographer, but right now I'm a, I am a video maker, filmmaker. Um, actually, for a while, Beto was my, my boss in the work. So, uh, well, video maker, photographer, aficionado, something like that. And I have two dogs. You have two dogs. Yeah, <laughs> that's a dream. <laughs> yeah, that's some people's dream for sure. <laughs> By the um, way, one one of my dogs is is uh, he turned one year today. Hey, yeah, congratulations! Deep, but yeah, I'm gonna throw a little party after this. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. So this is just the pregame, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just the warm up. <laughs> exactly. That's this is the warm up. <laughs> yeah. Well, congrats. Your dog is one year old. Yeah, thanks. Uh, maybe in, in in he he'll crash this this interview later. Um, okay. Jason, now now that you are uh, planning into the dream, what what led you to to photography? Was it always an interest to you, or it just emerged at some time? What 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 is the story behind? Yeah. So. Um... No, I wasn't always interested in photography. I used to make uh, little short films in high school. <clears throat> and um, most of the time when I made those short films, the thing that uh, drew me in the most was being like the cinematographer, being the, the camera guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't until like much later that I realized like that on its own could be like its own thing. It could be just photography, you know? Um, and uh, basically how that kind of, how I came to that realization was uh, my friend Caleb, who I think you guys interviewed. Um, oh, yeah. I never met him before, but on the first day of this new job, they sat me next to him. And um, I was forced to listen to him and another friend of mine's conversations about film. And, you know, at the time, at the time, at first, I was kind of like, oh, this is just like vinyl records. Like, this is just some dumb old technology that's like mm. <laughs> making a comeback sort of in a weird way. But then um, as I kind of listened to it and I saw some of their work, I was kind of drawn in, you know, film is kind of this um, interesting approach to photography. And I wasn't really a fan of just the digital approach to photography because I felt like it was too uh, by the numbers, literally <laughs> zeros and ones, I guess. Yeah. Um, whereas analog photography is like, a little more do it with your hands and it's not about instant status instant gratification um and so i think just all of that combined really uh drew me into it as soon as caleb put me onto it i picked up a disposable camera got that film back and was just immediately in love and uh i bought a canon ae1 and now smash cut to five years later and here i am Amazing. So that was your first film camera, the, the Canon A1. Yeah, yeah. Still have it. it. Yeah, still, I still use it. it. Yeah. And the and the lenses was the Helios forty four. Yeah, I had two lenses. One was the Helios, um, which I knew about from video making, and uh, the other is like a Rokinon twenty eight millimeter lens that I use more often now. Amazing. Yeah. Solid yeah, so camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this was a fi just five years ago. Just five years ago, yeah. And, and now you're just crazed in into film photography. It's, it's, I'm it's so deep, I can't turn back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's already too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you guys? What was your first film camera? My first film camera, Minolta SRT. Oh, um, yeah. That's uh, actually, that was my first camera because it was of my for for my class in the university and my father and my and my daughter i don't have any daughter <laughs> and my sister <laughs> my sister uh give me that camera let me that camera so that was my first camera you still use it camera. yeah i have it right here actually this yeah one. those things are like bulletproof we um you guys are going to hate me for this, but we were filming like a skit basically. And we had one of those that was already broken and it was like $2 on eBay or something. And we were trying to break it further, but we couldn't, we were like throwing it on the ground and just smashing it and stuff. And it would not break those things like 
are so rugged it's crazy <laughs> the ground was open opening yeah there's a dent <laughs> <laughs> like a nokia right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> wow crazy my my first camera was a a i stole my my parents camera it was a pentax k1000 oh that's a good one uh, yeah. yeah that's a good one Another uh, ever give it back yeah, yeah. Right now they have them back because I, I have too many cameras. I, I I I mean, one one other camera and and I couldn't fit in the apartment. But uh, <laughs> that was a great one because I I literally grab it and and start shooting without knowing anything, mm -hmm. and that kind of of led me into studying uh, visual arts and filmmaking, and then I just decided to went for photography full time. So yeah, that was the first one. And the first one I bought was a mm. a Nikon F FM FM ten or F ten FM ten, I think. Mm. The one the one looks like it's like golden or brass material look. Oh, is it like, like titanium like, or something? No, I don't think so. It was a cheap camera for let me see. Nikon. <laughs> It was like the was made for, of plastic, for, right? Or no? journalist? No, no, no. It was metal, all metal, but um... but ugly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people out there that do not like the look of Nikon cameras. <laughs> I don't yeah, understand it. Yeah. Nikon FM10. Actually, oh, okay. Beto it's like ha an, a, an 80s camera. Yeah, actually, yeah. you have a, a beautiful Nikon cameras, but the S3. The rangefinder one. Yeah, the S. S oh yeah. yeah. That's that's the most beautiful camera that I ever seen. Those things and are it, really cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's beautiful. The, the, the camera I I use the most. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Do you like the uh, focusing wheel thing on it? Uh, this not one is <laughs> not a fan because I I I, I literally uh, uh, blistered my my finger because with some lenses it, it it gets so like stuck and and it's hard to to move, and and it hurts. But... You're just shooting too much heat, man. You need to slow yeah. down. <laughs> that was the camera's way of telling you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, emulate a uh, modern autofocus, so I'm, I'm just... <laughs> yeah. That, that hurts. That hurt. <laughs> you can't compete with the machine, man. No, no, I won't. <laughs> Lesson learned. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jason... <laughs> we... Hey. <laughs> You're fun, man. <laughs> I have a drinking problem. It's just water, but <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, a pro that's a problem because your body. Yeah, uh, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that the f is this? Is water, water just get you rusty. <laughs> All right, I think I'm back. Okay, okay, okay let's okay. do it. So, so David, you, you were gonna mm, ask something? Okay. Yeah, actually, I was to tell you that we saw all your videos, of course, on your YouTube channel, and we saw mm -hmm. one that you said that you are a big fan of uh, Edward Hopper paintings. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's very interesting because not all the photographers um, share that, that they have an inspiration and they have a, a favorite painter or maybe a photographer with some some style, a specific style. So um, the question is, it's only Edward Hopper, your favorite painter, or do you have any other painters or maybe photographers that you you admire yeah so i feel like i'm kind of weird in this um situation i uh i don't really like look up to other photographers work so much um because well for a several several reasons probably i think the biggest reason is i don't want to directly emulate their work and just be like a copycat yeah. i kind of want to like draw inspiration from different sources and i think drawing Going back to the roots, I mean, before photography, there was painting, and that's kind of how they just, you know, showed things. So um, I look, started looking at a lot of paint, uh, a lot of painters, a lot of paintings, and uh, somehow Edward Hopper came to the top of that list. And I started really looking into his work and just diving deep into his style and um, kind of what he did to like make his um his paintings just so beautiful and resonate with with me and a lot of other people yeah. um so that's why i made the video and i to be honest he was really just the biggest inspiration for a long time and he still is like my number one inspiration but 
yeah, there's been some other artists that I've found a bit more recently that have kind of, um, you know, left their uh, their mark on my style a little bit. And one of them is Richard Estes. He's another painter out of New York. And um, he kind of, he did this weird like photo realism kind of painting. Mm. Um, and he actually shot, so he would go around New York and wherever he was and shoot, I think large format pictures and then go back into a studio and paint them. Um, and he always did he always did it with like these super wide angles like probably the equivalent of like an 18 millimeter lens or something oh, okay. like that very beautiful but all of his paintings are very detailed and just just wonderful and so i'm gonna make a video about him uh one of these days but um yeah i think his uh his approach to photography with uh these super wide angle lenses is was definitely very inspirational to me um and i definitely recommend checking out his work if if you have it already yeah 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 we will so uh, what what do you i mean what obviously the 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 work the passion the the, the aesthetics in, inspire you about this these painters but i think but of uh what i watched in your videos it's more like the the mood and the the atmosphere that they they portrait in in their paintings not not only the, just the lighting or the the aesthetics the colors it's it's just like a i don't know i think that you get that mood and try to replicate it and try and not replicate it but sense it in in the scenes you're watching every day i think correct me yeah. if i'm wrong yeah well i mean when you look at a painting or just like someone's photo or just a piece of art like I mean, if, if you have a soul, you probably feel something, right? <laughs> um, so I guess as artists, a lot of time, a lot of times we have to choose what it is that we want to like put out into the world. And for me, that was sort of this, this feeling that I felt when I looked at an Edward Hopper painting. So yeah, atmosphere specifically for Edward Hopper, it's, it's really about atmosphere. And um, yeah. so that's something I take into my, my own work pretty heavily. Yeah. yeah, and actually the the work of Edward Hopper is always showing solitude and mm -hmm. that uh, and the and the lighting it's always uh, very specific and very very melancholic. Uh, me right? Yeah, actually yeah. very very melancholic and that's that's the that's the magic of Edward Hopper for example Uh, a lot of photographers love also the work from Rembrandt, for example, because of mm -hmm. the light. Because of the lighting. And, yeah. Or Vermeer, the, another painter from the, from Holland. So I think that maybe all the photographers love that work because of the lighting, the game, the, yeah, the, the light and the game with the light because it's very tricky to to do it in the real life, actually. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the the... For me, that's a beautiful part of the of admire a painter like that. Yeah, I mean, if, for example, if you can mimic in photography what these painters are doing, I think that speaks volumes as to how good of a photographer you are. You know, if you can shoot portraits with Rembrandt lighting and really pull it off, then I think you're a great photographer. You know. <laughs> yeah, actually. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that kind of lighting is it's it's hard to 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 recreate and to get a good result of it it, it is it is hard yeah isn't uh, isn't it like impossible or something like he was painting light somehow that couldn't exist no, or something yeah. yeah i i think the the only uh, instrument capable to see that is the human eye because mm. no no dynamic range of any camera can uh, i mean just like i don't know a Red Dragon 8K, <laughs> I don't know what, what that has film 16, camera, right? 16 stops. <laughs> yeah, a film camera, very rare. Yeah, 35 um, millimeter. But yeah, I I, I, I just um, I agree with you. It, it it was almost impossible, and that's the magic in 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 painting because all the the scenery, the lighting, and, and that's like I, I don't know a a plus. I don't know. It's it's like 
the one time human beat the machine, I think. Yeah, yeah, well, it, yeah, a machine can't, uh, Rembrandt's style, for example, is like, that's his, um, that's his vision. A machine can't be like artistic in the way a human can, hopefully. I mean, if they've already if they've already done that, then we're, we're not yet screwed. there. But <laughs> <laughs> it's around the corner. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now talking about m machines, uh, uh, Jason, tell us which is your most beloved camera? Because oh. in in your five years of journey, you 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 have the chance to use awesome cameras, awesome uh, film stocks. So tell us which one is your most beloved camera and film stock. Yeah, that's a hard question, man. Uh, sorry, sorry. Just, just for today, maybe tomorrow yeah. it's another. another oh, answer. it'll change in an hour, probably. <laughs> uh, the Budweiser, right? Yeah, the, for the sure. Budweiser can. <laughs> I've only shot one roll through that. I it's the worst <laughs> camera on the planet. Seriously. <laughs> David, you have one of of a a yeah a a a, a soda a soda like yeah, Pepsi, um, like, yeah a like, like a mountain one. like a Mountain Dew yeah. can but but Mexican <laughs> Mexican yeah. version of Mountain Dew yeah. that's yeah. awesome yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah they made like 20 of them I want to collect them all but they're just the worst cameras man yeah they're so yeah. bad <laughs> it's cool that you can like wind it by twisting yeah. the thing but like that's that's it that's where the fun runs out you know. Hey. And you can use it to go, for example, to Coachella and maybe yeah. simulate, simulate that you're drinking. And <laughs> I haven't thought about it for that, but yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> do it, do it. Make a video about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be a good video. Um, my favorite camera is probably the Mamiya 7. It's just yeah. the, the camera that I use mm. the most. The results I get out of it, I'm always happy with. It's just... The 65 millimeter lens that I have on it is so sharp. And um, I think it's just, it's a lightweight camera. It shoots six by seven. Um, the only thing that sucks about it is it goes to one five hundredth and that's it. And it's electronic. So it's going <laughs> to shit the bed one day. Are we allowed to swear? I'm sorry if we're not. <laughs> it's okay. No, All good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna die one day, and that'll be a sad, sad day. But don't say it. Don't say it. Yeah, <laughs> but I'll have plenty of other cameras to uh, comfort me in that <laughs> in that dark time. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Well, you have the the Plowbell six seven. You have yep. the Pentax seven. You had the Fuji XT one. Yeah. Which one, right? The, that is the Japanese uh, sister from the Hasselblad. Expand, yeah, right? of the expand. Yeah. So you have a lot of, of choice to choose. You have a lot yeah. of cameras to choose. Yeah. Don't worry I love them all. <laughs> I can't. I can't choose a favorite, but my favorite's the Mamiya Seven for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite film stock, probably Kodak Aerochrome, but it's so rare nowadays that mm. you just can't. I don't know. Can't find it. Can't afford it. Whatever. You know. <laughs> yeah. If you find it, you can't afford it, but. Well, maybe you can, but but you'll be broke for I don't know. It's it's too much months. to spend on one roll of film. Like it would be cool, but like, what well, I saw one that was going. It was a roll of one twenty Aerochrome, but it was going for like three hundred bucks. And it's like really oh, just wow. one roll. Yeah, and it's that's horrible, but whatever. Oh, well, maybe Elon Musk uh, will start shooting film. And yeah, <clears throat> I have this. <laughs> I have this theory that uh, Kodak's going to reintroduce Aerochrome. I don't know for sure, but I kind of have this theory because I saw a report at the beginning of this year that they were going to introduce some new film stock or something like that this year. And yeah. um, so far, nothing. But my theory is uh, since they reintroduced Ektachrome uh, in 2018 or whatever, like Ektachrome Infrared is kind of just an offshoot of Ektachrome. So they already have the base formula why not just do the infrared version of it you know maybe that's yeah we that we cool. know we know who know that information but he he wouldn't tell oh really uh yeah, yeah. his name is nico yacera from nico photography yeah. news nico, i love nico he, he's so funny he knows he knows he knows oh, what he? what he knows what Kodak is is launching this year but he wouldn't tell all right so we gotta go uh where does he live we gotta go 
he, he, he just moved to Finland. I, I, I think <laughs> that guy is so funny. I love his his channel so much too. It, it's been <laughs> incredibly helpful. Yeah, he is, he's way funnier off of the air though. He's like super funny in like the DMs and like instant messages and stuff. But on air, he's like strictly business, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, so actually, funny. yeah. But I love him. He's he's the greatest. Yeah, and, and talking about videos and YouTube channels, we saw the, the last video you talk about the the reproducibility factor or the peak factor. Yeah. You know, but there is another factor, maybe the B factor, the Baxter factor. The B factor in your in your videos. The B so, factor. Yeah. The B factor. So that's that's funny, but you you make uh, jokes about it and also you do it uh, some shots on purpose to show baxter <laughs> how do you feel about that the the growing famous uh, baxter in your videos i it was tough at first um <laughs> but uh i've learned to accept it that he's really the uh the superstar the emerging star of the channel <laughs> and i kind of just like i do everything but you know He's the one who who gets the praise, so I'm fine with it. It doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> so it does exist, the B factor. Yeah, the B factor. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. It's one of a kind. kind. Yeah, one of a kind. He's he's a gorgeous, gorgeous guy. Yeah, um, he's a weird looking dog for sure. He's got a he's got short legs and just a really <laughs> sausage, beefy body. <laughs> it's 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 great. It's from like the one in Mad Max movies, right? It, I don't know how British is that, but it's it's similar to Baxter, that dog from the Mad Max movies. Was it the? I've only the seen Mad the Mac? new one. The the, the Mad no, Max the the the, the one the in the eighties or seventies. I don't know. With Mel Gibson, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, That's funny. You're the first person to actually say that though, because most of the time people associate it with Anchorman. And okay. His dog Baxter, you know, <laughs> um, or uh, Scrubs. I think one of the characters' dogs is named Baxter, or something. Yeah, too. but uh, uh, it yeah, looks really. similar to that dog from that movie. Oh, okay. You can check it out. Actually, I'll check it out as soon as we're done. <laughs> <laughs> now, talking about uh, uh, your YouTube channel, Rainy Days. Mm. How, how do do you uh, figure that out? When do you decide to open a, a, a YouTube channel? How was that that process? Yeah, um, I guess it's been about two and a half years now that I've been doing it, and uh, it has grown amazingly, man. Congrats! Yeah, it was very surprising. Um, yeah, I'm still kind of in awe at it, um, and it's just been this. It's been a really wonderful ride to get to meet you know some really cool people that are part of the community and you know start a conversation. Um, it's been really awesome. Um, the channel started, I was working at the same company I met Caleb and I just felt sort of a lack of creativity in my life. You know, mm -hmm. um, I was working a job that didn't really, uh, I didn't really have a lot of creative freedom. You know, it was pretty much like the producers or whoever is in charge tells me what yeah. to do and I just do it. And been like, there, been there. Yeah, I think everyone's been there, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so I was like, you know, I need to do something on my own. I watch a lot of YouTube. I watch a lot of Willem Verbeek, uh, negative feedback, just, you know, all the heavy hitters on YouTube. And I was like, look, I have some filmic, uh, some um, video experience. And, uh, you know, I love shooting film. Why not just give this a try? It seems pretty straightforward. I know what I like to see in a video. There's no no reason I can't you know, produce some of that too. And so I started it off and I had like so much trouble thinking of a name. Um, and I eventually wound up with grainy days because I like, I made a list of like things that I like, like ice cream, bananas, <laughs> rainy days. And then I made a list of like film terms, like analog 35 millimeter uh, grain, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, whoa, grain, rainy days. There's something there. So I just chose that. And I thought, I mean, now I think it's like the dumbest name on the planet, but can't change it. It's a little late. Um, so I just started I, I making videos. It's a great name. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, it's you have to say that, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, not really. Not really. <laughs> um, 
Uh, so yeah, I made a few videos. Like the first three were just like really bad. It was me just like <sighs> trying to make these videos and they weren't very like entertaining at all. And <laughs> I realized like the thing that I liked about these videos, like there was like some comedy in them. Like in one of them, the, um, you know, on a shutter release cable, the little pin at the top that screws on, it came yeah. off. So like to take a photo, I had to like stab my thumb every time. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's funny because I'm suffering. So that's a good, you know, that's funny. So I was like, oh, maybe I can just like keep, keep going with this. And um, that's what I did. I just started implementing more humor based on like the situations I was, I was in, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, um, uh in that, uh, with your videos, how do you get inspired with your scripts? Do you improvise everything, um, or you have the meetings with Baxter and you have? Yeah. Uh, Where the uh, hell do you get those yeah. those ideas, man? Uh, yeah. They are it's some fi the finest humor I've seen in 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 a long time in in a YouTube video. Yeah, it's like it just hits the spot every time. Um, where do I get the idea? Yeah, I run it by Baxter for sure. Um, gotta get his he's the one. He's the one who approves the, the scripts. Um, I don't know where, I, where I get it. I think I just watch, I watch back a lot of the like footage that I shot of like when I went out to shoot or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that'd be funny if I said this and just kind of change the, uh, the meaning of the situation or something. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense. It's just kind of, it's half like it it's like stand-up comedy a little bit where it's like <laughs> they're going on like a when they go up on stand-up comedians go up on stage they're kind of running through a script in their head but they're you know improvised based on like yeah the conditions or whatever and that kind of thing the, the people in the front row and yeah hecklers kind of stuff, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 only with youtube there's no hecklers you're just talking to a inanimate object a camera so um yeah there's like bullet points like stuff i want to talk about and then in my head, I kind of have like um, ideas of like jokes. And it's really like on the day I'm recording, I'm really thinking about it a lot. And then when it comes to recording, I'm like, all right, here's how I say the joke and how it lands, you know, I think. Yeah. But yeah, that's the process mostly. Congrats, man. They, they are yeah, some, some great, great videos. I, I just uh, uh, laugh out loud while I'm watching the videos and my girlfriend is like, you're watching that guy again? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. And I'm just like, oh. yeah. Yeah, my favorite. My favorite one is when you start uh, saying hello. <laughs> that's oh, that's, yeah. that's the best. That was unexpected. Yeah, you like that one? <laughs> yeah, that's the best. <laughs> it was it was unexpected, yeah. and I was where? That's Jason. <laughs> that's Jason talking to me. Yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, <laughs> that video was a tough one. That was the like Bay Area one, I think. Yeah, with yeah, the X-Pan. Um, that video, I don't know how much you guys want to know about behind the scenes stuff, but like we, uh, not we, I edited the video and at the very end of the video, it's like 28 minutes long or something. I realized that I was editing in the wrong frame rate and you, after you edit the video, <laughs> oh, you can't on. change it. So I was like, oh geez. And this was like the night before I was supposed to upload and I was like, well, I guess I'm screwed. So just <laughs> uploaded it, just bit the bullet. So that's the one video that's at like. It's at like 32 frames a second or something. It's something weird. <laughs> how do yeah. you set up that that timeline? I, I don't 32. know how that happened, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it happens. It happens. Yeah. I'm not it a professional. Happens. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I want to ask you guys something. Yeah. What's your camera and your film stock? Mm, right now, I think my favorite film stock is uh, Lomography 800. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I like it. It's very... It's it's nice. They have very nice colors, and it's for me right now. This is it's the best option for me. And mm -hmm. my camera, uh, the Pentax six seven, and my Minolta SRT. What lenses you have for the six seven? The um, I have the 50, 55. Yeah. I have the um, one hundred five, and I want to buy the seventy five, but it's uh, it's. It's impossible for me. It's, it's too the two eight. Yeah, it's yeah, it's too much money for me. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's an expensive lens for sure. They make yeah. an older version, but it's like an f four or something. Yeah, f four. So no, nobody that likes that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the same page as you, man. Yeah, it's 
I want that. I think that we have the same uh, watch list on eBay, so maybe we have the same lens in the watch list that the lens uh, 75, the 775 F2.8. Yeah, every time I look on eBay, there's only like three of them. Exactly. Available, yeah, and they're all like three thousand dollars or something. Exactly. It's stupid. <laughs> and you, Beto? Um, my favorite camera is the the Mamiya six forty five. Okay, that's, that's my favorite camera. I love the 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 eighty millimeter lens. It's just sharp as as a razor blade. It's amazing. Do you have the uh, one nine version? No, no, the the two eight. Okay, for sure. And I have a a thirty five millimeter. It, it it is awesome. It is so strange to shot with that lens and that that camera because I don't know. I I I can't figure the 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 horizon right anytime. Yeah. It's like so so strange. I I I don't know if if it's the ergonomics it's, yeah. or or whatever. I don't know. I but thought that I was just me, man. Yeah. No, no, no. I, that, that that is a, a big problem. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get shots back from my Mamiya Seven, and the horizon's just like tilted a little bit. I'm like, what? I thought I shot that correctly, <laughs> but like, it's always know. always in Dutch mode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it always happens. And my favorite film stock. I I ah come on. I I I shouldn't be saying this. I uh -oh. I recently I recently enjoyed shooting Ektar. Oh man. I, I just hated Ektar, but <laughs> I, I just tried it with a with a, a strobe. At, here at home I improvise in, in a studio. Yeah. I, I put on a strobe in a, a softbox and the results the results were amazing. But that 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 stock just craves light. It it is you have to shoot it with a lot a lot of light. I I yeah. rated it at, at eighty. Yeah, most people do. And, and, and it was amazing. Yeah. But my favorite film stock, if we ignore Ektar, it is not. I'm, I'm not admitting Ektar is my favorite stock. It kind of sounds right. like you are, man. No, 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 no. I, I, I think Portra 800, but Lomography 800 from the roles I, I developed for, for, for David recently, it was amazing. It was just yeah. Shocking! I, I'm, I'm it's just gonna buy some Lomo 800 and try it out. Lomo 800 is a great stock. Um, I the only thing I don't like about it is that I don't know about 35, but for 120 you have to buy like three rolls at a time or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wish they just sold it like in singles or whatever, but <laughs> whatever. Yeah, in 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 120 it is amazing. It was a surprise just to scan those those. Those films was great. What do you use to scan them? I I digitize them. Okay. With a Fuji XT2. Yeah. And then use the the, the old and mighty Negative Lab Pro. Yeah. They just released the, the new beta and, and the the new engine is amazing, man. Oh really? Have you tried it out? I saw they released the uh, the new beta version, but I haven't. No, I haven't tried it out. What did they change with it? Um. You have control now. Well, in in the main panel, you have a before, uh, like checkbox, so you oh. can quickly switch before and before and after a your your recent uh, adjustments. Uh -huh. And you have now control over the the three engines, the three main color engines that that it was using between uh, version two point one, two point two, and two point three. You can select what engine to run to through your your negatives, oh, and also cool. also yeah. the sliders were uh, are so smooth. It's not like yeah, jumpy. It doesn't, it doesn't go like yeah. yeah. <laughs> so weird colors everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nate added the exposure slider in the in the control, oh, and it awesome. worked. And it works amazing, amazing. Awesome. Yeah. You have better results than. If you make them a positive TIFF and jank the, the exposure, it, it is better now with, with Negative Lab Pro because it, is, it works directly from the raw file. Mm. It's great. You should try it out. Yeah. Did they add any new profiles or anything? Uh, uh, new camera profiles improved. The uh, mm. I, I don't know which ones, but some were improved. I don't know. 
Oh, cool. uh, but it it runs great. I didn't have any any bugs. Uh, I've been using the block for like four days now, and it is just running smooth. I hope so. <laughs> it, it stayed like that because yeah. If no, I have to un uninstall it, like roll back to the <laughs> <laughs> last version. Yeah, I love Negative Lab Pro. That program is such a. It's like the saving grace of film photography. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, they they have a, a, another two new sliders. One is called Lab Fade, and the other one is called oh. Lab. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but. One just like fades the the shadows and yeah. gave gave it this when you have very deep shadows and 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 the, it was like just com like kind of grainy but grainy yeah. grainy in, in a in a bad way. Now you can fade that shadows. I don't know what it does, but it it gives them like a like the it it doesn't give an, any detail back, but it it smooths the the shadows. It I mean, it's like like like. It's like your last chance to save a, a underexposed photo, but it, <laughs> yeah. it works, but it works. <laughs> okay. So Jason, have you, have you heard about the YouTube channel, Bad Flashes? Uh, no, I haven't. Tell me about no. it. Well, maybe, maybe someone can, can tell you something about uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Oh, you hey, guys. <laughs> I can't hear you guys. I don't know uh, what if the audio dropped out or something. Uh, it dropped. No. dropped. Uh, can you hear us now? What? I can't hear you guys. Oh come on! Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> hey Caleb, what's up? <laughs> Long time no I was, see. Hey, I was just editing my video, and this whatever this thing just popped up. So I don't know. Uh, what's going on. All right, peace, uh, guys. I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Yeah, we have a, a little uh, dynamic that it's called uh, the the Caleb's trivia. So Caleb <laughs> have have some question for you. So please, Caleb, go on. Yeah, for 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 the final part, we always like play a little game. Like, uh, would you rather? Or what do you prefer? But this time, it's called Caleb's trivia. So okay. Caleb <laughs> should. So just here, here's a here's a few. That's that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what would you prefer? A complete signed discography of Hoobastank on vinyl or a complete saga of Shrek signed by John Lithgow? Well, Caleb, you know me pretty well, so I think you already know the answer to this one. <laughs> and should. it's Shrek. <laughs> of course. Yeah. yeah. Shrek John movie. Lithgow. He, he's the one who did it in for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. He made that movie. Yeah, he did. Okay. So second question. Which of these options best describes your dream portrait shooting? Listen closely. These are some bangers in here, okay? <laughs> Stuart Little plus HP5. Shrek plus Fuji Pro 400 H. Or Alvin and the Chickmunks plus Aerochrome. That Aerochrome is hard to turn down, but uh, I think I got to go with the Fuji Pro 400H because Shrek's green, and so <laughs> you would. Yeah, that makes sense. That I would. Out. I would shoot it with a Contact 645, overexpose it one and a half stops, maybe, and it'd be beautiful. You know your game, man. Yeah. Where are you getting the contacts from? Uh, I don't know. Stole it. <laughs> okay. Okay, dead body. <laughs> uh, well, how did the body die? Die. This is really awkward. You're hey, getting... that's for that's for the FBI to figure out. <laughs> okay, here's, here's question three. What warms your heart the most? Taking pictures with your Fuji XT1, or being mistaken by or mistaken for Ryan, Ryan Gosling at Costco? Which one do I like more? Yeah, which one warms your heart the most? Shooting well, with the, the, the fake Hasselblad X Pan. Or... Hey, that sounds bad. That's real. <laughs> right, right. Realer than your X Pan. Oh, oh, okay. oh no. This is over, That's guys. not the way that the question was, was scripted. Sorry, I had to go there, but you kind of you pushed me. 
Um, well, I've never been mistaken for Ryan Gosling at Costco, so oh, damn. I guess shooting with the X-Pan. And yes, I will c continue to call it an X-Pan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's another question for you. If you could only have one of these things for the rest of your life, which would it be? A Dairy Queen Blizzard or an In-N-Out Shake? Oh, come on. That, that, that's kind of... The Dairy Queen for sure. Dairy Queen. Okay. I think, yeah, I think I associate Dairy Queen with our road trips and how we eat them like every night. <laughs> yeah. And in like 15 years, we're going to have like diabetes or something. Yeah. 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 That's we're going to be on our deathbed and be like, oh, God damn it, TQ. Yeah. Our <laughs> deathbed in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was thinking like three, but sure, 10. 10. Mm. 10's a little more generous. That's a little more okay. hopeful. Here's the last one. <clears throat> and this one's hard. Okay, this one's a hard one. You can either never travel outside of California ever again, but shoot as much film as you want. Ooh. Oh, come on, man. Who's or, paying for it? Or, the, or, the, the universe is paying for the it. The universe is providing The universe has a bank account. <laughs> gods, they'll do it for you. <laughs> or you can travel as much as you want, but you can only use an early 2000s Olympus camera. Like the MJU? No, no, no. A digital camera, sorry. Digital. Only... Oh, you left out uh, a major detail. I though. did, I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't looking at my notes. I was looking at your, your rugged face. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Olympus digital camera from the early 2000s. Did they just make really shitty cameras then or something? I mean, they're like, you know, around Not 7 to 12 megapixels. So, mm. I mean, it's early 2000. Like, like four megapixels. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the those, are, those are your options. The, 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 high, the, pro, the pro line. The pro line, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I would st stay in California and have the universe pay for my film. And just go okay. ape shit. Yeah. Never, never leave to go anywhere. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. That's good. Well, that, that's what would you What would you guys choose? Probably. Ah, oh, come on. But I, I'm, I mean, if if we have to shoot film forever in California, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I choose to a little. Uh, and I don't know if Mexico City. Uh, uh, that that's that's different. <laughs> you couldn't just yeah. stay in Mexico City with an infinite amount of film. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I, I could, I could. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I could. Also, and and I choose the Stuart Little option with HP five because I think the <laughs> defend will yourself. Be, yeah, yeah, he will be look amazing because he he has a beautiful white uh, fur. Uh, fur. Yeah, yeah. Mm. you definitely thought about this. Yeah, uh, like you yeah. put a lot of thought into that question. <laughs> Present an interesting yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not I'm not furry. I'm not a furry guy, but man, I like I like oh. a combo. Yeah. It's good to know. It's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew better. Uh, I think I I never shot a Aerochrome before. It's a uh, tempting option, but mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna uh, I I would stick with uh, Stuart Little and HP5. Yeah. Nice. Wow. I do Aerochrome all day. With the chipmunks. Yeah, with the yeah. chipmunks. Yeah. I think they look pretty they could look pretty good. Would they they would probably just look like blue chipmunks, dude. They don't <laughs> they don't emit infrared, so it wouldn't do anything. I know, but but there's nothing that says anything about the background. So if you complement the al mm. the chipmunks, you could get some some nice stuff. <laughs> I guess you can you can, use, you can <laughs> yeah, guess. shoot one picture of them and then use the rest of a roll for everything else. Yeah, like go that way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're done. Go to I, you're not doing so much. And I think that maybe Donkey from Shrek you will also looks amazing on HP five. Also, <laughs> do you know. just think everything looks good on HP five? Yeah, you're, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Overexposed it. Yeah. Overexpose it. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> hmm. You've uh, presented some very interesting takes today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, guys, will we do another 
their last the last dynamic uh, for you two guys. I know you are a very good friends. So we will Yoda and, you. and Kyle. Kyle McDougall, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I will show you some photos, and if you want to share some thoughts about it, it will be very cool. So this is... If you don't, it's okay. Yeah, if you want to leave, don't say anything, I go. So this is the first the first image, and it's this one. Oh. What can you tell okay. us about it? I mean, I think there's a really sexy man in frame, but I, you know, that's... <laughs> I was trying to take a picture of Caleb's ass, but then I realized I had a wide angle <laughs> lens on there. So, yeah, yeah. Every, everyone watching that happen was, they were a little creeped out by it, but it's okay. That's a great <laughs> shot. I love that shot. It is yeah. great. Did, did you use it, a, a, a mist filter or something? I must have. I can't remember. I pretty much used like Pro Mist filters on Cinestill 800T religiously at that point. Okay. So I think I probably did, yeah. I can tell you I was misting. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that, was, that was a terrible <laughs> joke. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, next oh, picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just ruined it. Okay, next picture is this one. Mm, Shrek Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you get it? It was a present from uh, my girlfriend, Monica. Amazing. She used to work at DreamWorks. So they have like a Craigslist at DreamWorks. And uh, <laughs> some guy some guy was selling this for some reason. And she was like, why not? So uh, I think she gave it to me for my birthday. And uh, it's been haunting this apartment ever since. It wasn't used yet, right? It's... It has not been opened. OK, amazing. Yeah. It is, however, in a shrine in his apartment. Yeah, surrounded by candles. So yeah. it's probably the most valuable thing I have. <laughs> okay. So next picture. I found this on in a Reddit and uh, on Reddit actually. This one. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about it? Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> and you can the B, the B factor yeah the B factor right <laughs> and you can have any thoughts about it I mean I wasn't the one who made it that's it well, sure. you? Sure, Caleb. <laughs> 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 okay next next picture is this one what you can tell about it <laughs> <laughs> was yeah. I asleep for that I can't remember it was right when you were waking up. <laughs> and I oh, thought it would be fantastic to just, you know, obviously flash that. God, I look like <laughs> shit in that photo. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you know what? To be fair, that's why that account exists, is for mm. terrible photos. Uh, and there are more. There are definitely more. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to lie. The tones oh. and the colors are on point, though. It looks good. Yeah. That's the what a tones, seven that's what a 7.1 megapixel camera would do for you. Yeah. And I'm I'm traveling. Is, is that a, 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 a cyber, shot? cyber shot? That was with the cyber shot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looks mm -hmm. amazing. For me, it's it's perfect. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this next is one. Art, Jason. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anyone's going to frame this and hang it in the Louvre. <laughs> oh, I bet they will. Maybe it's about going, the toilets. It's going, on, it's going on my print shop tonight. Okay. <laughs> do it, do it for charity or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the next one is this one. Mm. I think this was in 8 for by 10 actually? Yeah, we shot it on 8 by 10 out in the, somewhere in the desert. and uh, One of the rocks, I think. Yeah, and uh, I shot it wide open and... On some, it was on a some a film called uh, Panatomic X, which had been expired for sixty something years, and wow. uh, it was, I mean, it was pretty bad quality film. Luckily, it's on eight by ten, so when you scale it down to like this tiny window here, <laughs> it looks like fine, you know. But uh, man, that film was had seen some shit for sure. Maybe this is better. Okay. We didn't we didn't talk about eight by ten, but how 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 crazy it is shooting eight by ten. 
I mean, uh, I think it's it's a, a completely different ritual, right? Yeah. Have you shot four by five? Yeah, four by five. Yes. It's I haven't shot four by five, so I don't know, but. It's a completely different. It's like a head rush. Have you shot this other thing? No, you haven't. Okay, me either. It's fine. Whatever. I don't know where I was going with that. Um, it's it's awesome. It's a head rush for sure. And every time you it not like regardless of how good you are at shooting large format, every time you click the shutter, you're always going to feel like you messed it up somehow. Yeah, yeah. I, I should feel like with the the I don't know if. If it if it comes blurry, if if it is off frame, if it if I I know anything yeah. could could fail, I, I think I'll be so nervous. Lucky for yeah. this photo, though, there's a sexy model in frame. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. I was the only thing around. Yeah, we kind of just made do with what we had. <laughs> no, it's a good shot. It's called surviving. Yeah, it's a great shot. Yeah, yeah. This is the birth of your modeling career, Caleb. Oh yeah. Next, oh, yeah. you'll be on the Victoria's Secret runway. I no, I'll take that job. I'm sure they pay pretty well. <laughs> if you're good. <laughs> yeah, you could work like twice a year, and, and that's it. And <laughs> this is another one on eight by five. They were eight by ten, right? Yeah, eight by ten. Uh, yeah, it's one of the. I've only shot two color photos on eight by ten. It was on yeah. some expired Fuji NPS film, oh. and. Uh, that was the first time. That was the first photo I ever took on eight by ten, actually. And uh, we shot a video for that. Yeah. Um, Caleb shot it actually, and um, did a great job. Thanks, buddy. Oh, thanks, oh, man. man. <laughs> I submitted it for best cinematography for the Oscars last year, but they blocked me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they blocked right 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That was but, a, that was a cool. We got really lucky that Baxter sat still long enough. I could take the photo. Ah, really? I, I I thought that he was always very quiet and, and calm, but he's a, a yeah a crazy he, dog actually. When he's when he's outside, he wants to just like look for food. That's his whole thing, you know. Just mm. loves to eat food, like his dad. Um, but <laughs> he's always trying to find whatever he can eat. Um, See, Jason is presenting a side of Baxter that only the camera sees, but yeah, mm. a whole other side of Baxter. Yeah, <laughs> he's a diva. He's a diva for sure. <laughs> we had to have onset catering that day and everything just for him. Oh, it, it only had dog food, so it was like Monica and I couldn't have any. And, you know. That's not the dream, actually. That's not the dream, yeah. <laughs> and guys, I'm, this is the... Sorry about the what? No, I, I was just curious. Uh, what is the resolution of on, on this scan? It's like... 1 million megapixels by 1 million or something like that. It's actually a solid 4 megapixels. I scanned it with the uh, Olympus from 2000. Um, no, it's oh man, it was something like 20 no, it was like 30 by 24,000 pixels or something like that. And Lightroom wouldn't even import it, so I was like I had to like cut in the pixels down in half or something to really? import it. Yeah. Wow. And my computer started chugging and everything and i was like yeah this is what i'm in it for <laughs> that's a dream that's a dream <laughs> that's the dream yeah. <laughs> and this one is from caleb actually yeah so, it's a good one yeah it's on lamography actually no in metropoli yeah yeah it's when we did our metropolis videos we should go that's back cool. to that location that was a cool spot yeah we could we could go back now that we both have 120 do yeah. the entire thing just with 120. Sounds good. Yeah. What did you shoot this on? It was 35, right? Yeah, I think it was my it was my Canon, my EOS 1N. Yeah. And actually, it's it's a very <laughs> I I never I never shoot to Metropoli before, but I will I will buy some. It's worth it's trying out at least once. Yeah. yeah. I, it's it's hard because it's like those shadows those shadows aren't going anywhere and those highlights aren't going anywhere either. So it's like this very, I don't know. I, I had a lot of trouble when I was, when I was inverting and coloring these photos. I don't know if I knew what I was expecting from it. I like what I got, but I think now knowing what it, what it looks like and what it does, I could do something like a little bit better. Maybe, maybe kind of go for the, I think I shot this at three, 320. I probably, okay. I, I was, 
I was about to ask, how, how did you rate it? 400, 200? No, 200. Three. Oh, 200. I, I 200. Just kidding. Hmm? Yeah. But it's, it looks good, actually. It's a yeah. very good model, actually. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Next year wasn't around. <laughs> well, guys, yeah. this, is, this was the last one. So, guys, anything that you want to... To talk about it, to want to add to the any new project, any anything any you could tell us right now. Any trip maybe coming on soon? Yeah, any trip. It's in your bucket list, obviously for for obviously for shooting shooting a film. We I don't know Mexico, you, Mexico, I mean, Mexico City, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I told you last time I'd do it in Mexico City in a heartbeat. That'd be great. Uh, it is a crazy cool. city. Jason and I, we have one coming up in a week or so. Is it a week? Two weeks? Three weeks? Something like that? Two weeks? The small yeah. one. Uh, oh, that oh, one. No, no, no. Oh, I, I know. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. We're going we, out we to have this. A lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what can we say? Um, <laughs> yeah. We're going out to the Salton Sea in like two weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Salton Sea, but it's like this, um, this t it's like a resort town from the eighties that just kind of like died off basically. And a lot of the buildings there are abandoned or just run down. It's a really good oh, photography right. location. Okay. You would but, uh, definitely, you've definitely seen photos from there for sure. Yeah. yeah. I would have for it. Yeah. That sounds familiar, but I'd never heard of it. Like by the name. Yeah. You, Jason, what you did a video for the Salton Sea back, back in the day. Like it was a yeah, long actually, I, and you did a, a drum video actually or something like that. Maybe. Yeah, I did. I did a video about the Salton Sea. I think it was like way back before Caleb started his channel, even. Yeah, I don't. I didn't yeah. do anything for those. Yeah. Yeah, you were just uh, a guy in my videos. Just the guy. Just, just the, the guy. guy. <laughs> hey, you're the guy from Rainy Day. Yeah, I'm the other one, the one who doesn't do anything. <laughs> I'm that bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. maybe Mexico City is in your bucket list in in a in a very future without COVID, <laughs> but yeah, but um, yeah, we have that thing happening. I you will love it. it. Yeah. You will love Mexico. You can shoot every portrait that you want it. Every portrait? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mexico, tacos and, and, and beer. Beer, coffee, tacos. Yeah. I'm sold. I'm booking yeah. my flight right now. Taco, tacos yeah. and, and, and cheap beer. Yeah. Cheap beer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. You know, way to my heart. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a, a a Mexican girlfriend for Baxter. I don't know. Maybe. Oh yeah. <laughs> everything could. Everything is yeah. possible. Well, when we go on our trips, we like to stay in a king size bed. So I hope you have a really big bed for us. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have IKEA right now. In yeah, we'll Mexico figure it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry about it. You will be very happy. Awesome. <laughs> have you guys been to California? Uh, one time from, yeah, like two years ago. No, three years ago. Yeah. In for for two days actually because right. it was a business business uh, travel. So I just actually I just shoot one video for Nissan, and I came back to Mexico City right away. Mm. But right it's, uh, I I went to Venice Beach and all that, all that zone. It, actually, it was very very nice. The skate park, it it was awesome. It's it's beautiful. I just knew, uh, late like from Grand Theft Auto video games actually. So. <laughs> well, then you've seen it. Yeah, and I've seen it right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. I've I've been to San Francisco, but I I would like to 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 go and and and. And know that the the southern part of 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 California, I, I think it it will be great. We should we should make that happen, David. Mm, I don't yeah, know. Visit. Maybe maybe next year. Yeah, yeah, I think maybe next year. We we had a an interview yesterday from some guy from New York, <laughs> so we have the what the list LA and then New York. So that's that's the dream. It's the dream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> next year. <laughs> Well, you have to come to LA before New York, so just throwing that out there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we will do that. <laughs> I think we 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 will be just fine. Like, I I've heard there there's a lot of like 
Mexican food mm. in, in 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 LA and in that kind of stuff. I mean, it's like a, a mixed culture, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> but you only get to eat in and out. That's all. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> Me too. Don't worry. <laughs> Big fan. Yeah, amazing. Guys, well, thank you very much for being here with us. It's really a, a pleasure to talk with you guys. So if you want to add something, it's a moment. I think not. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> thank you for bringing me on for three seconds to to Rosa Jason. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, and uh, thanks for blindsiding me. <laughs> <laughs> were you, uh, Caleb? Were you in the lobby watching the whole time? For for some of it, for uh, like maybe half of it. Yeah. Do you see the part where I like totally choked on my water? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> give me, give me a I wish I was now. <laughs> I will send it to Caleb that that okay. clip. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, no, but we, yesterday, we'll I knew it. yesterday when we were talking though. You're like, oh yeah, the guy that I'm like, oh, oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will edit that out from from the video, but yeah. we'll send you that clip if if you want to use it for any reason. Yeah, it's up to you. You don't have to edit it out if you don't want it, but. If it's funny, I don't know. If it's funny watching me die, almost. <laughs> we, we, want the, we want the views, so sorry. sorry, mm, Jason. It's got to stay. I don't know. Yeah. May, may, <laughs> maybe the, the first part, and then we, we just go to, like, I don't know, yeah. color, color bars, and then... There you go. Yeah, and, create and, a... A new Jason again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, create a, uh, what are they called? Like a fake controversy or something, you know? Like we had to yeah. cut something out. Yeah. We will we will send it to TMC maybe. There you go. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. Can't wait for them to show up at my door. <laughs> yeah, you're. <right. laughs> well, guys, uh, thank you a lot for for your time, Jason. Thanks a lot for for being here, uh, Caleb. Thank you for for uh, hopping in in so short notice. Because I know <laughs> yesterday, last night, was like it would be awesome if you if you just <laughs> jump in and ask some questions. So Good thing thank I don't you for that. So it's it's great. <laughs> <laughs> this is the highlight of my weekend. <laughs> just kidding. Let's, come on. <laughs> got a lot of stuff going on this weekend. Sorry, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. Uh, take care and and. We hope we see you soon, yeah. either in California or here in Mexico. Yeah, take care. Thanks for having me on, and thanks for working with my schedule. Appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Bye. Is there is there any uh, wrap up, oh. or is that it? Oh man, you. Oh, what? <laughs> I'm back. How did yeah, back. <laughs> back motherfucker? Yeah, <laughs> can't get rid of me. No, All right, the, the video just ended, but thanks okay. a lot, man. Uh, really, yeah. really appreciate your time, yeah, and 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 yeah, keep up with the great work. It's really inspiring and 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 fun to watch. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks I, for uh, keep up the uh, you know the podcast. Or is this a podcast? I don't know what this. Uh, is. I don't know. We, we we like to call it a podcast, but it's yeah. just our thing. I, we don't know what it, yeah. this is. I and think you guys have a really cool format, so just keep doing it. You know, it's Thank it's you, really it's really awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks, and actually, man. Well, something that I saw in your video that it's excellent and I like it a lot is that you combine humor with something that you love, and that actually that's that's amazing. No, no, not everybody can do that. It's very difficult to have humor on some topics, and you are doing it. So, congrats. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, because we laugh and we also uh, actually learn things. And that's uh, a, a great, great, great uh, thing. And, it, and it's a great job. Thank you for that. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. All right. Keep up the good work. I'll, we'll talk to you later. Sure. sure. Have a nice Thank weekend. You, Thank you. All right. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye, Yoda. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>